Do we start? Okay. Um, so we'll do a quick talk about Y and O in Xamarin forms. We compile Xamarin to IL. Um, it's actually very similar to the tour that Andrea did earlier this morning, where she uh, transpiled TypeScript into IL. We'll, you'll see a very, uh, a very similar pipeline, very similar con uh, um, concept, uh, but it's it's, it's, it's in, in, in the context of compiling uh, XAML, XAML file, we, we'll come back to that, uh, in, in, into IL. We could, we, but, but also this uh, concept could be used to compile any resource that, is, that needs to be interpreted at runtime. Um, I'm doing this talk as well because that's one of the black box of XAML forms. Uh, very people know how this works. Uh, very, very, very few people know how to contribute to this part. And we're just scratching the surface, uh, but that will explain you uh, how it works. So I'm Stefan. I work on Xamarin Forms uh, since 2013. Uh, prior to that, uh, I'm using and contributing to open source since before 2000. I've been a contributor and maintainer on NetSpot. I've been a contributor on Moonlight, on Mono, on some other um, open source projects as well. You can reach me uh, on Twitter or on uh, GitHub. So I'm, by saying I, that I work on Xamarin Forms since 2013, I actually in, um, I'm at Microsoft for the past two and a half year when uh, Xamarin was uh, acquired by Microsoft. So Xamarin Forms, um, Miguel isn't, isn't there to correct me, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> Xamarin Forms is a, is a framework to create, <coughs> at first, mobile applications, uh, and you build your application once, and then you deploy it on any of the supported target, and the, the application will be native on that application, on, on, that, on that platform. Over here you see uh, iOS, Android, and it might still be WP7, uh, or it could, be, um, it could be UWP, I don't remember which, uh, uh, at which time we took this, uh, this picture. So th those, are, those were the main targets for Xamarin Form. At this time, we, uh, we support deploying Xamarin Form application to iOS, Android, macOS, UWP, WPF, GTK, Tizen, GUI.CS, so the one you saw earlier, and probably still a few others. So at Xamarin, we maintain the backend for iOS, for Android, for UWP, for Mac, uh, all, o all, all of the, the, the other backends, WPF, Tizen, uh, GTK, are contributed by the community. Um, so Tizen, if you don't know Tizen, Tizen is uh, the OS that runs in your Samsung TV or in your Samsung uh, dishwasher. So if you want to run, uh, application on your dishwasher, it will be a Tizen one. <laughs> um, it also, Tizen also supports uh, some, uh, some wearable uh, devices. Um, so this is Xamarin Forms. Who is using Xamarin Forms? Great. Yeah, but I know, I know those guys. Um, okay, so in, um, so Xamarin Forms, if you see this, all, all of those controls are native to the platform. So this is this, uh, this is um, this is an iOS map. This is a Bing map, and this is a Google map. But but the code that runs that is exactly the same. Uh, everything is native um, at the time of rendering, uh, and we create a UI 
uh, either in C sharp, in F sharp, or in XAML. What, what, what interested uh, us at this time <coughs> is XAML. Um, XAML Inform is also open source. It uh, hosted on GitHub, so it's, op it's open source almost since. I think we open source it a bit before uh, being acquired by uh, by Microsoft. So it's it's uh, it's been it's been open source for the past three years. Uh, we get a lot of external contributors. Uh, the community is great. Uh, it happens on GitHub. You'll you'll see the the, the GitHub address uh, a bit later. Um, so this is a very simple XAML file. Uh, who's not familiar with XAML? No? Okay. Uh, so XAML is just a descriptive language. Um, it's not a programmation language, it's just a descriptive language uh, that can create objects and assign properties. So there is no conditionals, there is, it's, it's not, it's not a, a Turing complete language, it's just a declarative uh, language and in this case we just create it, it it's a it's a subset of XML um, I mean it's XML it, it's XML uh, compliant so uh, XAML is just XML so it, you define a content page in the content page we define a stack layout and in the stack layout we define a label with a text and that text is bound to a property of the context um, so that's, that's XAML. When, when, seeing the, when you see this, basically you've seen most of what XAML is. So it, it's just quite simple. Um, what we used to do uh, on XAML Informs is taking this XAML, shipping it as an embedded resource in the assembly, and at runtime when the view uh, had to be inflated. We were extracting this resource, parsing it at runtime, parsing it to an AST, and then uh, expanding that using reflection so it becomes a full object tree. So from that, we turn that to actually an object, which is a content page that contains a stack layout that itself contains a label with the binding. So you could write the equivalent of C-sharp code for that. Uh, it would take something like 15 lines. Um, the problem is, if you, if, you, if you come back to the previous slide, uh, on the middle there was an Android device. And Android devices are quite diverse. Um, you have the, probably the DIN that the guys over here have in, in their hands. Uh, those are Samsung, those are uh, LG. Uh, uh, but, but there is also a, a, full sup, uh, a full set of devices in Android that takes something like 60% of the market that are low-end devices, something that costs less than 100 bucks, or that have been bought more than three years ago. And those ones are single-core, old core, very few memory, and when you start doing parsing of big files on those, using reflection on those, uh, creating tons of objects because you need, you, you need objects, and then garbage collecting them, um, you end up with quite bad performances, meaning that for large, uh, for, 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 for a large XAML file, turning that XAML file into an object tree could take a few tenths of milliseconds, like 60 or 70 milliseconds, just to interpret the input and having a, an object tree, which is not yet at this time rendered on screen. So that, 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 that's 70 milliseconds, that, or 60, or it depends on, on the device, um, that, that, that were just lost, on which that, that was not, comp not compressible time. Um, yeah, 
so th so the, the 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 main the main reason for that is the the the, the main problem for that uh, the passing at runtime inflation using reflection is performance on Android. Uh, so as we are mobile application, mobile application most of the time, 99% of the time are self-contained. By self-contained, I mean that all of the assets are already part of the application itself. Yeah, it can connect to external servers, but most of the most of the views you would in 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 a in another application that's not Xamarin Forms, you would write it in AXML in uh, in uh, in Android. You write it in Swift or Objective C in iOS. And so, why? So ev everything is known at the time of the compilation. So we could technically. It's not ev everything that we know that that we know at runtime is also known at compilation time. So why not? keep the capability of writing XAML files, because XAML is a great way to describe UI. Why not uh, turn the, uh, keep this capability, but turn that uh, into something that is actually compiled and as fast as if you have described your application using C Sharp, uh, C++, Objective-C, or whatever, and be actually compiled into the assembly. Um, so we we, we 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 can do that, and that, that 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 that's an advice that you 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 have to use for all of your mobile mobile application. If you have a resource, if you can do something at compile time instead of at runtime, you have to do it. If you have an image, and that image needs to be resized, it's better to resize it on your computer time at the time of creating the application, instead of resizing the application, resizing the image at the time of rendering. If you, can, if, if you know the size it will be rendered at, uh, resize it before. Because everything that's done on the device is done a million times instead of being done once on your machine. And it's done on some low-end devices. Um, yeah, I know that if you if you have a if if you have top of if you have a top of the range iPad, it's probably more performant than this laptop. Um, but that's not the case. I mean, it's the case for us in this room. It's the case for people in the West. But it's not the case for the for for for, for the rest of the world, Mo most of the world, uh, and the target the, the the big market for the for the mobile application right now, the, the, the market for expansion, the, the market, that, the, the people that need uh, applications is, uh, it, 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 it's Africa, it's Asia, it's, it's, and, and, if you, and if you go there, you, you, don't, you don't feel developers with the same privilege that we have over here in Europe, in the US. Um, and you, they don't run, they, they don't run, run with the same constraint. So, um, so, so we we need to think about the performance. We need we need we need to test our device or our application, not on our personal devices. We need to test them on actual devices uh, used on the field. Um, so, what do we do? So, we we, we how, how, how do we achieve that compiling XAML into IL? So, we have that XAML that's exactly the same as as before. And we pass that to an AST. An AST, yeah, it's just a tree. Uh, it has a content page. The content page has a property content, which is a stack layout, which is a property children. Um, and the children is actually a label, which has a name and a text. Um, this is actu actually the, exactly the same parser as the one we, we, we used to use at runtime, Xamarin Forms. It passes to, to, uh, to uh, an AST. And then we. On the AST, we run um, a few. We, we run a few visitor, visitor, uh, visitors. Visitors. So, so we, we implement a visitor pattern, and we go. Or we we go on all our nodes and do some stuff. Um, if you yeah, um, for working on trees like this uh, on EST, visitor pattern is is is, is often, often a really good one because you can walk the tree multiple times 
without modifying it. Um, and so we, we have ev everything in all three is an inode. And we have some visitor um, that, 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 implement it, that, that implement the, the node visitor. Um, so the, 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 the most important one in this case, because I told you XAML is a language for um, creating object and assigning properties. So we have a create value visitor and we have uh, set properties visitor. Um, so that, that's what we do. So we, we at first create all the objects, create the content page, create the stack layout, create the label, create the object that will be set, create the binding. And then on the second pass, what we do is setting the name of the label to label, setting the text to a binding, setting the content, the children of the stack layout to the label and setting the content of the content page to the stack layout. And we do that uh, using MonoCecil. Uh, MonoCecil is an awesome library that generates and, uh, ge generate and, um, and inspect assemblies. Um, so it's used, for example, at Xamarin, we use it for the linker. The linker is the tool that you run on a fully built application and that will remove all the stuff that you don't need. And again, if an application is fully, con uh, fully, fully contained, uh, you can follow every pass and you can find that this function, this class, this type, uh, this property is never used except if it's used by reflection. In that case, we don't know. You have to mark up. But we, we can remove everything and we can, uh, we can um, reduce the size of, uh, of an assembly. Uh, that, that, that you, you, you might think that you do not write code that's not used. But when you, when you write code, you depend on MS Core Lib if you write a C Sharp application. And you don't use every single function of that MS Core Lib. So you don't have to ship it. Um, so Cecil does that. Uh, Cecil, is, Cecil has been around since 2004, uh, and it's done by uh, by, our, by our friend Gb. Uh, Gb, yeah, a few years ago he was living in France, so he was um, he was coming to Fosdem every year, uh, but not anymore. He moved to Seattle. Um, so how do we do it? So I told you that we just try, we, we are generating IL. This is the IL we generate for the example, uh, the, the, the example uh, I've just shown you. So this is, the, this is the IL. This is the equivalent decompiled C sharp, if you know C sharp. Uh, so we create the binding extension. Uh, the binding extension is the markup extension with the curly braces binding. We create the label, we create the stack layout, and that's and we store ev uh, every single of them in a variable. Binding layout, stack layout. We do that. What time is it? Okay. Um, and then we set the properties exactly with the DIL. Uh, we, so, so this is the code we generate uh, from our XAML to IL compiler. So, and this is quite equivalent to the C sharp. So we set the text as the pass property of the binding, we set, we set the, the text to the pass property of the binding. It's over there. Uh, we set the binding to the label. The label is the variable one, which is over here. Uh, we add the label as a children of the stack layout, and we then set the value content to the stack layout, and then we return. If you look, if you look at, the, at the, the number, we, we are quite high because there are some of the visitors that generate stuff. Those are for uh, the ability of names, for, for the ability of name scoping. So you can do find name, uh, man, maintaining sta state, uh, and so on. Um, so it's it's a bit more complicated than just that, but this is this is the this is the gist of it. It's it's it's, it's the minimum requirement, and then yeah we. We, we need to support some more complex when you have uh, references between parts. And um, that, that, that's why, that's why it, it, it gets harder. Um, 
on performances, uh, it compiles XAML faster than the equivalent C sharp. So XAML is slightly less verbose than C sharp. So if you have to write the same code in C sharp that you would write in XAML, you would have three to five times more C sharp code uh, because all the binding is done automatically. Um, you, we, we most of the time create the object and assign the properties on the same line, something that's not done usually in C sharp. Um, so this is this is uh, this is a, a run that just that, that I just did um, this morning. So my laptop was on the power reserve. Uh, so it was on. Uh, so the, those those numbers are the, the order of, of magnitude is right. The the, the number are not uh, are not describing the the reality. But basically the XAML C uh, for 1,200 lines of XAML took three times less than the number of C-sharp. And if you multiply that by three or five, you, you, you end up seeing that we are a bit faster than Roslyn. We are on the same order of magnitude as, as the, the old monocompiler. Um, I think I've missed something. OK. Yeah. Um, so the runtime performance is totally worth it. We are inflating the view uh, really fast. Uh, most of the time, we inflate the view, so we turn the XAML. Uh, not the XAML, because the XAML is not ship anymore, but we just construct the object in a few milliseconds. Um, we also, I, I haven't shown you that, nor explained, but if you take up this, this is a markup extension. It actually can get compiled uh, just like all of the markup extension and we by, by doing a compiled binding if you know what a binding is it's a way to uh, link between your view and your view model and most of the time we do that by reflection and by connecting via reflection to identify property change but if you do that if, if you know the type of the view model at compile time you can actually create a function that does that and cut the cut the the reflection from it, and so we have a boost up to two hundred times on bindings. So bindings are known to be not that fast, and that that's the case in most languages because they are they are syntactic sure they 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 are convenient for the for the developer, uh, but they are not known to be fast. But if you manage to keep the syntax of the binding and turn that is into actual actual code at compilation you get the same performance that if you were observing uh, the object uh, yourself so if you want to know more or contribute to xamarin form uh, it's on github xamarin slash xamarin form and that's it do you have any questions Depending on device, but if you know, do it. If you don't, it's probably. But image was just an example. You can, you could compile. If you have huge JSON file uh, that you ship to your application, you can think of a way to pre-process them because those are, those are stuff that are expensive to process at runtime. And image was <laughs> was one was one of the. Um, was one of the examples. But yeah, most of the time, you don't know the exact resolution. But you know, if you have telemetry on your application, you probably know uh, what are the 10 most known size, at least for icons. And some of the image, not the image that take full screens, 
but most of the time, those those one you don't ship them with the application. An image that takes full screen, except if it's a, if it's a background, uh, you don't ship it. It's downloaded from uh, from a web service. It's stored in it's stored in your local storage for your application because you're doing a photo application, you're doing a news application, and for those one, there is very little we can do. But most of the time, that's a single image on a page. But if you have a UI that you fully drawn with some images because you have a button, you have a pen, you have, a, and if if you if you don't pre-process those image, you will pay the price. And if it ma if 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 the the, the customer experience uh, matters to you and it should, uh, so you sh you you, sh you should really measure what takes time in your application and see where you can. That's free time. That's really free. Other question. In, the, in this case, in the, in the case of the sample, you, you, the, we, we have some blog about it. Uh, but to be able to compile the bindings, we have to, uh, yeah, we are at the okay. Q&A. Thank you. Um, to, to, for, for, for the XAML compilator, to be able to compile bindings, you have in your XAML to tell, this is the expected uh, type for the view model. And so we know that. Uh, the, it, 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 it was way out of this 30 minute introduction to compile examples. So, but there, the, we, we have some blog from David about it. So you, you just tag it at the eye level and you tag it at the list view level so you know that for your uh, data template it will be this and we can compile everything. Um, so we are, we, we, we are still, this, this is actually shipped for the past to an half year. It's been en enabled by default for the past year and a bit, uh, but we're still working on it. We're still uh, doing more and more compilation and less and less at runtime just to save time. Question? Yeah, for example, I don't know. I, I would say just measure. Measure everything. Speaker. I don't think. Okay. How does this clip work? Oh, there we go. Hi. Are you Michaela? I am. Hi, nice. Michaela. I'm Steve. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I guess it's fixed. Uh, do we have a level somewhere that we can see if it's good or not? Or? I have not seen anything. Okay, well hopefully it's okay. So, occasionally one of the AD people comes in and does some stuff. Okay, I'll try not to touch anything. I think there's like a couple of them for like the whole thing. Got so it. They okay. just watch the feeds and All right, things. that's good. Okay, so I will try and give you a five minute warning Great. and then count down on my fingers. Okay, that's fine. Hopefully it'll be good. I'll have my iPhone as well. So. <clears throat> Ooh, busy. Okay.